I guess I could answer that from a f couple different avenues. I mean, ultimately, I think it shows it shows me. But how it unfolded in my life was I was a patient, and the timing was very good for me in that I had finished an undergrad degree, I had traveled for a year, and I had a number of ailments, most notably um, back pain and headaches that were quite debilitating and. I'd seen a few different uh, uh, practitioners, physio and chiro, not extensively when I look back. I wasn't that committed, but I was in my early 20s. And I uh, was working in a hospital in rehab, and, and there was an individual there who was in third year osteopathy. And she saw me walk, and she said, oh, I have to study for my third year exams. I see you have problems. Could you be one of my patients? And so I went. and. The way she assessed me and the way she approached me was very novel from my previous experiences and it really struck something in me. And so I left that, that treatment and um, inquired about the training and actually applied and, and was accepted and started all within about three weeks of that. And you know, at first the seven year length uh, was very much a deterrent and then I just decided that there was something there I had to go and discover. So I just decided I didn't need to finish. I would just go start. And that's how I found it. People. I love people. And in my profession, I have the opportunity and the time and the space um, to connect with people in a very authentic way, to listen to their what ails them, what they suffer from, whether that's emotionally or physically or, or spiritually even, and to sit with that suffering and to bring company and attention and kindness to that is a rare opportunity. And osteopathy is a vehicle for that for me. Well, I remember a large volume of information, um, which in and of itself is not intimidating it's just knowledge and you have to put in time to acquire it i remember that learning required you know really three different things the acquisition of knowledge um, the learning to receive information you know we use our hands as our primary interface but of course we receive with our whole being and learning to move my body in a way that allowed me to connect and bring information back to the patient I remember kindness, you know, it's an intense academic pursuit, but there was a lot of kindness in the way my teachers um, approached the content and approached me, and that kind of caring is not found in a lot of other health professions. That's the thing that I remember the most fondly. I remember that it wasn't about just knowledge acquisition, it was about a transformation that was required within you. If in order to serve patients with this approach, you need to transform yourself and discover your own health. And I, I actually recall that as being part of my training. You can only ever be as good as those that teach you, but it requires your effort. So I, I have what I have achieved and what I'm able to pass forward to my patients is because I had fantastic teachers, but I also made a fantastic commitment to be present and to learn from them. The other advice I would say is be organized, because if you have this kind of volume of information and you're not organized about it, you quickly become overwhelmed. And third is um, do your own work, take responsibility for who you are and your own health, and in that transformation you take the biggest step forward into being an, um, an effective practitioner.